This is everything that you need to know to dial in your settings to get beautiful videos straight from your iPhone. Whether you're taking videos to capture your next family gathering or shooting your first short film on your iPhone, it's important to get the best settings that you can so that you can be proud of these videos for years to come. My name's Davey and I'm a photographer and videographer from Canada. I use my iPhone to capture videos on the daily and with the correct settings, these videos look stunning. Before we dive in, I just wanna remind you that everything today is gonna to be very simple. We're gonna be just using our iPhones and the native camera app that is built into the phone. Today, I'm using my iPhone 15 Pro and I'm running on the operating system iOS 17.3. So if some of the settings look a little bit different than the iPhone you're using, that's okay. Some of the magic to getting incredible videos on our phones is in the settings. We only have to dial these in once and then we don't have to worry about them after that. Let's go to the settings on our iPhones. If you can't find them on your main page, just swipe down and search for the settings. Let's look for the camera tab. It's about halfway down the page. And if you can't find it, again, just go to the top of the page, swipe down and search for camera. We're gonna work our way down this list, starting with record video. So we've got a list of variables to choose from. Each variable has two options. The first is resolution and the second is frame rate. The higher your resolution, the sharper your image is gonna be. This also means that your files are gonna take up more space. We're gonna be selecting 4K 24 frames per second because when that video is played back, it looks the most true to life. 30 frames and 60 frames per second capture more information so the image looks smoother, but videos captured in those frame rates are meant to be slowed down later, so we're gonna to stick to 4K 24 frames per second. Next is PAL formats. Videos are captured and played back at different frame rates around the world, so if you live in a country in Europe, Africa, Asia, or South America, you're gonna to wanna to turn this on. I live in Canada, so I'm gonna be leaving this off. This next setting is a big one, enhanced stabilization. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that this one is on for sure. Having this turned on tells the camera that you want your footage as stable as possible. I think it makes a massive difference. It really takes the jitters out of handheld video on your phone. HDR video. This is great if you wanna be viewing the videos that you took on your iPhone or somebody else's iPhone, but the format that it records your videos make it a little complicated and more annoying to view your videos and edit your videos later. It requires a couple more extra steps that we don't wanna to have to deal with. So I just personally leave this off. We're almost done with this menu, just a couple more settings. Lock camera, let's leave this on. Your iPhone likely has a couple different cameras on it and by enabling the setting, you're telling your phone that you don't want the camera to automatically switch between these lenses while you're filming. This issue could easily occur if you're framing up a shot and you've got something in the distance and then you wanna rack focus to something closer. Your phone's gonna wanna switch to a macro mode, which is on a different lens. And then when you switch back to your subject in the background, the camera's gonna be stuck on this other lens. I found similar issues when I'm trying to record myself on the main lens of the camera. And I reach towards the phone and the camera wants to autofocus on my arm. And by doing that, it switches lenses. When my hand's gone, we're now using the wide lens and that is a lower quality lens. So best thing to do is just leave the setting on. Lock white balance. Most of the time, I'm pretty okay with the white balance that my phone chooses for whatever scene I'm pointing it at. But sometimes we want a little bit more control over our white balance. I find for myself that if I'm shooting something still in front of me or I'm shooting myself, I wanna lock the white balance. That way, if the sun goes behind a cloud or a light turns on in my scene, the phone is not gonna override that and change the colors in the scene. So for the time being, let's leave this setting on. It's gonna be more helpful on than it is off. That's it for that tab. Let's go back to our main camera settings. The next thing here is record slow motion. I don't record a ton of slow motion on my phone, so I tend to leave this at 1080, 120 frames per second. 120 frames per second versus 240 frames per second refers to how slow the footage is gonna be slowed down. 240 frames per second is going to be much slower. It's also gonna take up more space. I don't need my videos that slow often, so let's leave that at 120. And if we wanna change that later really quickly, I'm gonna show you a way so you don't have to dig into the settings. Let's go back, we've got record cinematic. This is a powerful feature, but we're gonna leave that for a different video. Formats. At the top, we've got high efficiency versus most compatible. This refers to the file format and size of the photos and videos that you're gonna be capturing. If you have a phone that doesn't have much space, then I would choose high efficiency. But if you've got plenty of space, lots of iCloud storage, let's choose most compatible because these files are gonna be easier to work with, especially if you're sending them to your computers or to a different iPhone. That's all for this menu. Let's go back and let's turn on record stereo sound. I think this is such a cool feature on our phones. 
our phones have multiple microphones all over them, so it's capturing audio from all around the phone. So when you're listening back in headphones, you can hear when an object or a voice is moving around your phone. It's a really neat feature. It works well with headphones, so let's leave that on. Under composition, we've got grid and level. Let's turn both of those on. When you're shooting, this is gonna overlay a grid and a level onto your screen, so it's easier to line up your shots, to frame things using the rule of thirds, and to make sure that your camera is level so that you don't have to correct that later. That's kind of it for the settings. Let's jump into the camera app and tweak some settings in there. Just a reminder, we're gonna be using the native camera app, the one that's built into our phones. We don't have to download any additional apps to make our footage look incredible. Before we even open the app, the first thing that you wanna do is to wipe the camera lenses on your phone. We're touching these things all day, they're going in and out of our pockets, and our fingerprints and oils get all over these lenses. So grab a soft cloth, grab the side of your shirt, and just give these a quick wipe. This alone is gonna make mountains of difference whether you're gonna get clear images or not. Whenever we're filming videos on our phones, let's try to avoid using the front-facing selfie camera on the front of the screen. I know it's tempting because you can see yourself when you're filming yourself on this screen, but it is the lowest quality camera of all of the cameras. You can avoid it sometimes when you're FaceTiming a family member or you're filming a TikTok or something, but when possible, try to use the back cameras. Speaking of cameras, Let's also try to use the 1x or the wide lens on our phone as often as possible. This is the highest quality lens, the one that lets in the most amount of light, and the one that gives us the cleanest image in lower light. It's not bad to use the other lenses, but when possible, try to stick to the 1x. That being said, do your best not to zoom in or crop in on your lenses when you're filming. When you're cropping or zooming, you're giving yourself a lower resolution and less options to crop or have creative decisions later. So do your best to just stick to the cameras that Apple gave us. Inside the camera app, we've got all kinds of options for what kind of video we wanna take slow motion, cinematic, time-lapse, but we're gonna be shooting everything in the video option, so make sure that that's selected. The iPhone's camera is pretty powerful and it usually does a really intelligent job of knowing what it is that you wanna film, but there's other times where it doesn't know. It can't always read your mind. So let's get in the habit of tapping on the screen for where we want our focus to be. By being in control of where the focus is on our phone, we now have some more creative decisions and options for when we're filming. By tapping on the screen, you're not only telling the camera where to focus, you're also telling it how to expose. Exposure essentially means how bright or how dark your overall image on your camera is. So in this situation, if I'm tapping on the sky, I'm telling the camera that I wanna retain all of the information in the sky. And by tapping on a dark part of the image, it's letting the camera know that this section is important and we want the settings adjusted so we can see in the dark. Usually our iPhones do an incredible job of determining what we wanna see or not see, but we now have a little bit more control if needed. You can also tap and hold on the screen and a little dial appears beside our finger. If we now swipe up or swipe down, we can now control the overall exposure on our scene. Pull it up to make our scene brighter, pull it down to make our scene darker. In my experience, the iPhone makes videos a little bit too bright for my liking, so we can override that by going into the exposure compensation and making it darker. To do that, tap this dial at the top of the screen and we just slide this dial on the bottom of the screen and it's gonna make our whole image brighter or darker and it's gonna save this into the settings so that we don't need to do this every single time. I like to have mine at minus 0.3, just slightly darker and I find it's a more pleasing image. Also on the top, we can see our resolution and our frame rate. And if for whatever reason we wanna be changing these without having to go into the settings, we can just tap them and cycle through the different options. There's a couple more options that are hidden here. You can just press the arrow at the top of the screen or swipe up. And we've got the option for flash, exposure compensation, ProRes Log or Action Mode. We won't be needing a flash and we already covered exposure compensation. ProRes Log is a powerful feature, but a video on its own. If you're interested in that, you can find that video on our channel. The same goes for Action Mode. This is a really cool feature, but a topic for another day. You may find that when you put your phone closer to some objects, this little flower icon is gonna appear in the bottom. This means that you're shooting in macro mode and your camera switches to a specific lens so that you can get clear images up close to your object. If you don't want this enabled, just tap on that icon and macro mode is gone. Now that your settings are locked in, I'm sure you're excited to go take some incredible videos on your iPhone. Thanks for watching. My name's Davey, and if you want some more tips or inspiration on how to shoot with your iPhone, there's plenty more videos on this channel that are here to help you.